Welcome to CNN Money Switzerland's summer series on megatrends. Today we're talking about digital health and I'm joined by Luisa Dobre. She's the CEO and co-founder of Comet Health. Hi, Luisa. Hi, Tanya. So I saw that you mention often that the health sector is still in the stone age. I was wondering, what do you mean by that? Can you give me a few examples? Sure. Actually, this is a quote from a chef arts clinical director that we have been working with. He said, you know, like uh, every time I'm, I'm outside of this hospital, I have all the latest technologies, gadgets. And then when I'm in the hospital, I work with pagers, uh, with decked phones, switchboards. Uh, we waste a lot of time to just find the information I need or the person I need to talk to. And uh, this is extremely frustrating, especially when you treat patients. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, now during COVID-19, we also saw that they have to give the information through fax. I mean, who uses fax nowadays? Exactly. So actually, 40, 42% of the healthcare communication happens by fax, which is insane. Yeah. Um, I, I witnessed, uh, we spend a lot of time in the hospital and I witnessed um, um, a communication between radiology and emergency and uh, an emergency physician came quite angry uh, at the radiology said, oh, I sent you this fax, where is the result? I said, which fax do you mean? I don't know which, what do you mean? Wow. So it, it's, for me it was shocking, I was like, seriously? Uh, we are in Switzerland and it's so important that the information reaches fast, especially when we are talking about emergency patients. Why do you think is that? Is it a mindset thing? I think historically it started like that. Um, and um, back in the days, fax pagers were considered like to be more robust. It's also uh, legislations. Uh, probably you also saw it during COVID-19. Um, in order that a recommendation or an order from a general practitioner to the hospital happens or vice versa, in order to be considered legal, it has to be sent by fax. Um, and during COVID-19, they basically had to overcome this uh, and use emails because otherwise the process would have been too long and they would not be able to react. So I guess for me, it's also after COVID-19, from my point of view, a lot of these legislations will change because uh, otherwise it's impossible to, to be fast. Do you know how much a cost is uh, uh, for that inefficient uh, communication when it comes to money or even lives? So, for example, um, I was just reading this morning an article that um, it, it was a research done that a hospital with 500 beds loses about 4 million uh, per year due to inefficient communication. And there are biggest researcher, uh, researches that we have referred to also on our website that about uh, a quarter of a million of people die in the U.S. because of inefficient communication. This cost the healthcare system in the U.S. about $12 billion. And in Switzerland, there have been also some, some studies made that 1,500 people die because of this reason. Uh, because you imagine in the moment you, you deal with these ancient ways of communication and when you need to take fast decisions, um, sometimes uh, the information can reach too late or can be uh, not fully um, uh, for somebody to take the right decision. And that's exactly where you're uh, stepping in. You want to try to, to bring the health uh, sector to the 21st century. Um, tell us what exactly you're working on. It's a collaboration communication tool, right? Exactly. So four years ago, we started Comet Health, myself and my business partner, which comes from the technical background. I come from a business background and our vision um, is to, to help doctors, nurses to save lives. And for, for me, the reason why we started this company is because we came across those articles saying that quarter of, quarter of a million people are dying every year, and for me it was shocking. And I was using tools like Slack or other communication platforms, and I was wondering why uh, something like this doesn't exist in healthcare. And then we, we said, okay, let's actually do a lot of research to understand the problem because um, 
is it relevant, you know, would it work such a tool? Is it needed? It yeah. is needed. Maybe we miss something. In the first year when we started, before even writing any line of code, for us it was very important to understand the problem before developing a solution, right? And I remember we were going from hospital to hospital, stopping doctors, nurses, asking them for five to half an hour, some of them even became our advisor, medical advisor, to share with us their problems when it comes to communication. And by now we spend more than 3,000 hours shadowing physicians, interviewing physicians. Uh, we, we already lost count, but this is how we developed our application. So basically what we do, we do a secure communication and collaboration platform. Um, you can think about it as easy as WhatsApp. It's very easy to use. Um, it can be downloaded on any type of mobile device, iOS, Android, but also on a desktop computers. Mm -hmm. And the value of it, it connects um, easily with the existing systems in a hospital, basically with electronic patient record. So in the moment uh, a patient comes to the hospital, we create a chat room with the name um, and the demographics level of that patient and invite the relevant physicians. So like a WhatsApp chat? Like a WhatsApp chat, exactly, but it's just around the patient or even around the role, mm -hmm. uh, like let's say on-call surgeon. Mm -hmm. um, and every time an event about that patient happens, we send notifications. Mm -hmm. Lab result is ready, radiology report is ready, the vital signs are too high, too low. Um, and also we add and remove automatically as much as possible the members of that patient chat. Um, so basically it's always um, yeah, dynamic. So you're trying to replace WhatsApp, fax, uh, pagers, all that as a tool of communication uh, with your app and platform. Why do you think it's better? What makes it better? So instead of having five to seven communication platforms that are not connected to each other, you have one that you can message, you can call, and you have always your mobile phone with you and as a doctor you are at the elevator uh, getting your lunch and you, uh, you get proactive your notification, the report is done and you can immediately reply. It speeds up the, the care process very fast. Also, of course, doctors are using WhatsApp because they don't have other tools to communicate and this created a lot of problems because WhatsApp doesn't protect patient data and it's, it's against the current regulations. And this is why also a lot of uh, hospitals have approached us, approached us proactively because they're interested in the security, which is at the core of developing our application. Just to go out to ask that, security, uh, safety, how do you make sure that the data stays protected? I, I would say probably you make sure that it stays on that app. Exactly. So basically, we uh, we offer uh, we have a Swiss cloud-ready solution, um, or Europe EU solution, depending if we have EU customers, or we also offer it on-prem. So for big hospital chain, they prefer to have it on premises. Uh, we also offer that, um, and then when it comes to the application itself, we have the the way the application is built is built with the um, the highest technology in order to ensure uh, security. And last but not least, we also work with partners for, for example, when a hospital has uh, bring your own device, we can provide them an MDM, which is uh, mobile uh, um, device management. So basically, you we bring can, the mobile devices with. We can also do that, but also the, the, to protect the data on, on the phone. So for example, if somebody reports a, stole, um, a stolen mobile phone, we can erase automatically the data on, on the app. In, and who owns the data? Obviously the hospital, the patient, um, but this data is not to replace, just to, to be sure that I am understood, is not to replace the patient history data or electronic medical record. Uh, it's about communication, real-time communication collaboration, um, and about sending notification when the event of a patient is ready. So instead of the doctor uh, going proactively to the radiologist, finding out when the report is ready, instead of making, I don't know how many calls, to find a very simple information. This information practically comes to him or to her, and this is when the, the process is kicked off and it's speed up. That's a good keyword uh, that you mentioned, that it's not a record uh, 
base database because Switzerland is working on this um, electronic patient dossier, uh, which is taking quite a while. And, and also the Tagesanzeiger wrote on, on the 15th of, of July that it's been postponed again. Uh, there are a few force and backs and the company that was supposed to do it is, is, is delayed. So I was wondering, once we have this digital um, electronic patient dossier, uh, will you still be needed? Is it a competitor? Of course, of course. Actually, for us, digitalization is um, a trend that makes um, our product even more relevant. Um, and um, these initiatives like creating an, a whole electronic health record, connecting the data of patients from different hospitals, we can be a perfect partner and enhance the value on any type of EHR, EMR, uh, by connecting our, our platform, which is really referring to a speedy communication and notifications triggering um, um, on such a platform. So as, as I mentioned for us, we are not a, a, a database, we are not an archive base. We can push the information that has been exchanged in our chats back into their system, but we are not a creator or a, an archiving system. So it would even help you if it existed at some point? Except, exactly. Mm -hmm. These are, would be the perfect partners for us. Yeah, but it seems like it's taking some time and comparing to other countries, you know, Denmark or in the Northern, we're so much behind. Um, could you imagine why that is? Like, I mean, Switzerland is such a, a developed country that's in a good digital question. health. That's a, um, that's a good question. I, 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 I would not be able to say exactly why Switzerland is behind uh, Denmark or Finland, which have digitalized most of their uh, patient records. Uh, probably it also has to do with uh, history, with the legal environment and so on. Do you but think I, the cantons play a role? I think as well because you have all these different cantons. I think this is a very good point. And you have different legislation and the whole political aspect uh, is not uh, very straightforward. It's very much uh, decided canton by canton. So I think this is one. But what I think as a trend is the fact that COVID-19 happened accelerates the digitalization. So I think um, I think it's, um, it's really a generational movement what we are all experienced now. And, and it's actually, uh, of course, it, it affected a lot of us. But on the other hand, I feel an opportunity that now also healthcare will adopt digitalization and accelerate it um, as other industries have done it, like the banking industry. Mm -hmm. You, you can feel that with your company. Totally, totally. So we have, um, so we have several uh, projects. Um, we have several customers in Switzerland, and one of our customer, um, which is was in the hot uh, zone of Switzerland in the Italian part in mm -hmm. Ticino, uh, decided to roll out our application during the crisis. Oh, yeah. We saw a spike in the usage of that platform, and then they decided to roll it out during during the crisis. So, I would say that we are also. Uh, proof to work in such a, in such a crisis and today actually even today this morning I had a, a call with um, a hospital in Germany which mm -hmm. are interested now to, mm -hmm. to start as soon as possible a project and the CEO the first word he said or the first sentence because of COVID-19 we need to accelerate digitalization we didn't plan this for this year but we want to have it rather sooner than later, so it was a matter of having in the next two weeks, not two months. I never seen a hospital so keen to digitalize, talking, no, 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 we need it in two weeks, not two months. That's amazing. And, okay. and this is like, I was like, wow, what happened? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you, and who else is, is, is using your, your um, tool? Do you have a lot of hospitals or are there a few that are just testing it? I mean, these seem to really be your clients now. Exactly. So we have seven, seven we have conducted seven pilots to mm -hmm. date. Um, and now we have two customers. Mm -hmm. uh, we have secured our first rollout in seven hospitals. Hospitals. Uh, I mentioned about Ticino, so mm -hmm. this is uh, where it's our biggest client currently. Um, and we plan in the next weeks actually go mm -hmm. to Germany. Okay, so uh, that's the next step, so now expansion. It's, exactly. Now it's the time for us to also um, expand. So it was interesting because 
we were supposed to start four projects in Q2. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, we couldn't access our customers anymore. What we normally do, we couldn't meet our customers. But we realized immediately after the, 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 the crisis, the first wave has finalized, uh, we got proactively engaged by, by customers and, um, and this is great. So on a short term, it was probably not uh, as we planned, but medium long term, I see a huge peak. Maybe one more. Um, so the, your uh, communication is uh, a problem in health sector. Is there anything else that you see that you think, oh, that is interesting. Maybe you're not involved in it, but that would be needed in digital health. So I think it's... Um, uh, it's an ocean of opportunities mm -hmm. in healthcare. So if I would want to start a company, I would still start it in healthcare because there is so much happening at the moment. Um, of course, everybody talks about telemedicine, mm -hmm. so communication of the patient with uh, with the doctors outside the hospital. You know, like now um, we are talking about acute um, patients or chronic patients um, that need to engage before coming to the hospital with a doctor and after. Uh, this is something we are also looking into mm. to enable communication with the doctor. Yeah. Another aspect of digitalization, I think, um, is medical research and implementing medical research into, into a real setup. Uh, I think there are a lot of changes happening there. Um, also, longevity is definitely a very interesting space mm -hmm. to, to, to go at the moment. Um, and everything that holistically takes care of the patient uh, before, before getting sick, by mind, body and soul, mm -hmm. and afterwards, so preventive medicine, ambulant medicine and all of that. Great. Luisa, thank you so much and uh, all the best for your expansion. Thank you so much, Tanya. Much appreciated. Thank you. And thank you for watching. And don't forget, if you missed any of our content, then go on cnnmoney.ch or check out our social media channels to catch up with all of our content. Thank you so much and goodbye.